So here we are with a 12,000 kilometer review on Chinese carbon wheel set. Yep, here they are, and this is the bike that they're usually on. Now, if you remember in previous videos, probably over a year ago, oh, over two years ago now, we had the unboxing when these first arrived from China. Then I had the 6,000K review, and now I was going to do a 10,000K review. Things happened, got on top of me. I thought I'll do an 11,000, and then winter came, and I had to do another 1,000. So here they are, just over 12,000Ks, and I still rode them on Sunday in the wet weather because I didn't want to get my other bike wet, so I took this one out. So let's have a look at how they're going. So the first thing you're going to say to me is, oh, you've got Eastern stickers on Chinese wheels. It's exactly what it is. In fact, you can buy all sorts of stickers, zip stickers, and what else is there? Campagnolo Bora stickers, uh, third-party stickers, and stick them on your wheels. In fact, I did a video showing you how you can put the stickers on your own wheels. So, they're not Eastern wheels, they're Yolio. Now, these are clinches. They're 60 millimeters in depth, so 60 mil section. They're 25 millimeters wide. Uh, I'm running a 10 speed cassette on here, so they're 10 11. You can run an 11 speed if you want to. Now, they're Yolio's basic SAP model, so it's got a Novatec sealed bearing hub and it has pilar spokes with aluminium nipples. The tyres I run, these are normally what I run, they're Vittoria Rubino. But I've also run GP, Continental GP4000s. I've gone through two sets of them on these wheels. And at one stage I went through a set of Schwalbe Old Tremos. But these are my favourite Vittoria Rubinos. They're fairly puncture resistant and they last a long time and they handle fairly well and they're cheap. But anyway, that's the tyres. Let's get back to the wheels. Now what we're going to do is put them in the truing jig and see if they're still going nice and true. We're going to have a really close look at the brake tracks, front and the back wheel, see how that's going. We're going to have a look at the free hub body, see how that's holding out, and of course the bearings, see if they're still any good. So let's get into it. Let all the air out. Of course, these wheels have been just on the bike in storage for a little while, so you always just store your tyres with about 50 pounds per square inch on your carbon wheels. Now, start at the valve hole, make sure the bead of the tyre has come off from the bead hook of the rim, make sure it's not sticking. Start the valve hole, gives you a mark to go by, and just go all the way around. Right, get your tyre lever. <coughs> Remember a nice tie lever that's slightly rounded, not too square, you don't want to puncture your tube. Should come off easy. You don't need two tire levers. You should never need to use two tire levers. And even then, just take it off with your hands and find a bit like that. And we're done. Let's pull that out because I've got a bit of a shim on there. Right, I'll stick them in the jig. So this wheel moves from a centre line around about 2 millimetres to the left and then from that centre line again around about 1 millimetre to the right. Now I could true this wheel, but I'm not. I'm going to see if it gets any worse or will it stay as it is. Now let's have a look at the rear wheel. So this rear wheel has around about one millimetre of deflection and that's surprising considering the rear wheel takes more of a rider's weight and power. Would you be happy with this wheel after 12,000 kilometres? I certainly am. And so to be absolutely sure, flip the wheel over and have a look at the other side. And that's fine. Excellent. Now, spoke tension. By feel, and I know every so often I felt the spokes for tension over the year and a bit. And they've been tight all the time. And these are extremely tight. They're excellent. So... 
Now one way you can test the tension of each individual spoke is you just get a plastic tie lever and you can hit them and you can hear a pitch. Now the brain, our brains are really good at picking up differences in pitch. So without using a tension meter you can actually just do this. Now see if there's any difference. They should ideally be all the same tension which means they should ideal, ideally be all the same pitch. Slightly lower. <laughs> that one's slightly lower. That's pretty good. Let's try the other side. So. So there you go. There's a slight difference there. But all in all, pretty good. Let's try the rear wheel now. Now with your rear wheel, the spokes cross once, just here. With the front wheel they were radial, so they rang really nicely. But here, they're going to be slightly different. Not going to ring so much, but you'll still hear the difference in pitch. So. So around here. Higher. Actually those two there. That's okay. Try the other side, this is the cassette side. <laughs> they are identical and it's slightly higher in pitch. That's because on the cassette side they'll be a little bit tighter than on the non-drive side. So all in all the rear wheel is actually excellent. Now the dishing of the wheels, and the dishing basically will tell you if the rim is exactly in the centre of your forks or your rear stays, or in the dropout washers on there. Okay, so now you need a dishing tool to do that, and you've probably been wondering what they are hanging up there. They're dishing tools. So, here we have the homemade one. Don't forget you can make that really, really cheap and easy. Make one for yourself, and it's just as accurate as our proper one from Made in Japan by Manura. So let's take our manure one now. I've already set this up so that I don't waste your time and you can hear the difference from one side to the other. So, hear that? I would say there's about two and a half, three mils there. So check the other side. It's pretty much exactly the same. Right, now the rear wheel. So I'll start on the non-drive side. It's about three millimeters. And on the drive side, I would say about four and a half. So maybe at the most two millimeters. So somewhere between one and two millimeters, it's moved over this way. So since the 6,000 kilometer a review we did when it was even, somewhere between 6,000 kilometres and 12,000 kilometres of use, it's crept over a millimetre or two, two millimetres at the maximum. So that's pretty good, it's almost insignificant. Right, the bead hook. And the bead hook is the end of your rim, there's one each side, and it's responsible for holding your tyre on your rim. So you've got your tyre like that, and your rim like that, with the little ends and they hook into each other and then when you pump your tyre up they hold nice and tight. So now your bead hooks are usually um, only damaged from accidents if you have an accident or you ride your tyre flat for some distance um, and then you can damage them. Other than that in manufacture there's usually no problem with them. So I've checked these before and rather bore you with the details. I've gone around both rims and they're fine so that's good. And usually if there is damage, you'll see that your tyre is not sitting on and it can blow off anyway. So, that's that. That's the bead hook. They're fine. Right, the brake tracks. Remember, your brake track is the life of your wheels. Once you've worn out your brake track, then you need to either replace your whole wheels or re-rim. So, let's have a close look at these ones. What we're looking at here is the scrim on the brake track. A hard compound mixed with high temperature resin makes up the scrim. The white dots you see in a matrix pattern is the basalt that Yolio uses in their scrim. 
the scrim on this side of the rim is still in very good condition. Those white marks you see is brake dust on the lip between the brake track and the section of the carbon rim. No big deal, it's easy to wipe off. No problems here, the rear wheel passes with flying colours. On the front wheel here, this mark shows the scrim is starting to wear away. As for the rest of the brake track on this side, it's showing signs of just general wear, not too bad for 12,000 kilometres. Let's turn the wheel over now. And yes, here we have some marks. Let's zoom in a bit closer. The basalt layer has worn away in this spot and is down to the next layer underneath. And here's another worn section. And here's a third section. Clearly, the basalt layer of the scrim is wearing through. So these wear marks are indicative of the fact that most of your braking force is on your front wheel. But of course the question is, how much longer will this front brake track last? Right, we're in the workshop now, so we can have a look at the condition of the cassette body on the rear wheel and the bearings in both the front and the rear wheel. So let's get some tools out. Often you'll find the last half of the cassette cogs want to grab onto the body as you try to take them off, like this. So just wiggle them slowly off. And the reason is, these marks here. And as you can see, the marks are on most of the splines. And there's four of them, and they correspond to COGS 4, 5, 6 and 7 of your COG set. And here's why. COGS 4, 5, 6 and 7 are the thinnest of all the COGS, so they exert more force per surface contact area on the cassette body. The wear on this Novatec cassette hub body is fairly consistent with any hubs at this age. Time to have a look at the bearings and first of all the rear hub and the left hand side. Very clean, that's a testament to the quality of the seal. Having a look at the drive side now, quite often you'll get dirt in this area because it sneaks through between the cassette lock nut and the axle. This is not too bad, it's very acceptable. Now slipping off the cassette body and we can have a look at the clutch area. The grease inside is a little bit dark and it's getting a little bit thick. The poles should spring back quickly, but here you can see they're a bit slow on the uptake. That's because the grease is getting a bit thick now. After 12,000 kilometres, I think it deserves a bit of a clean and a regrease. Right, so now we can see inside to the sealed bearings themselves sitting in there, but I've left the axle still in. And the reason is I'm not going to go any further because if you spin the wheel, you can usually feel 
if there's bearings that are slightly rough or not. These are super smooth. There's only just a slight hint of imperfection. Just a slight hint. So I'm not going to go any further and knock anything out and take the seals off the bearings. It's just not necessary. If they start to feel a little bit rough, yes, it's time to replace a bearing or two. But these are just fine. So 12,000 kilometers, still running beautiful. So what I will do though, I'll just clean out the older grease in there as much as I can and just put a light smear of grease back in. And the same with the clutch. With this clutch here, I'll just clean off that grease there and I'll just put a light coat of grease on there and put it all back together. And with the front wheel, just spinning it and holding it again, you can feel this is still super smooth. It's even smoother than the rear one, which you'd expect because the rear one has got more weight. And this is really good. But we'll, I'll just take it apart and show you anyhow. Right, I've just gently knocked the axle through and this is the end cap. It's not really a dust cap. What keeps the bearings clean is the seal on the bearing itself. That looks sufficiently clean. I'll just give it a wipe over with a clean rag and pulling the axle out, having a look Obviously the inside is being very well protected, it's like new. And there's the other side, the bearing there, all nice and clean. Now just turn the wheel over, have a look at the inside of the hub there, and the other side, very clean, just like new. Just goes to show you, the quality of Novatech hubs is really high, because this is just the cheaper of their hub range. Well, they've come up pretty good, haven't they? I haven't trued these wheels, or I haven't put a spoke key to them, in all 12,000 kilometers that I've had them. And the hubs are still really, really smooth front and back. The clutch is still nice and strong and positive. Although, as you saw while I was in the shed, I took the opportunity just to clean a bit out on the back and put in some of my own fresh grease. That's no big deal. Now with the front one with the brake track, the marks on there, I consulted Yolio and they said just to keep an eye on those marks. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to ride on these wheels and keep an eye on those marks and I'll let you know if something crops up. That's the other thing about Yolio. They're so easy to talk to. If you've got any queries about their carbon fibre products, definitely give them a message and I'll get back to you really, really quickly. Also, you can check out, they've got a whole range now of UCI approved wheels, both tubular and clincher. So if you're racing, uh, no hesitation in using them in events. Value for money, well, for the price of a name brand pair of wheels, honestly, you can buy a pair of aero wheels, you can buy a set of climbing wheels, and you'll still have money left over. So value for money, absolutely. For me, I'm going to continue using these wheels and see how long they're just going to go for, and I'll let you know. <laughs> here we go. George here. He's got his uh, new Yolio wheels. We just did 90 k's and uh, I don't know, almost a thousand meters climbing and uh, quite fast, 20. 28 average or something. So. <laughs> yeah. That was a good, a good ride. The wheels went very well. Good stuff. I actually enjoyed it thoroughly. Except Steve beat me in the sprint. <laughs> okay.